Wow, you graduated and then yeah. came back to Tormenta. What made you want to come back? Like, uh, uh, I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, definitely Tormenta. You know, as a whole, this place is insane. And just the professionalism, obviously, you know, even everyone knew about it because of the men's side. Mm -hmm. But once they started with the USLW, I think they completely stepped up their game to like another level. So I felt like I knew what to expect if I came back for another year and I knew that mm -hmm. it would be better than the previous year. So I was like, you know, there are not a lot of teams that offer what Tormenta does. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it a shot, you know? Why not? Right. Why not? And Jim was like, we would love to have as many returners as we can back. So he was like, you know, you're one of them. And if this is what you want to do, you always have a spot here, you know? And I was like, okay, that sounds, that sounds nice. You know? Yeah. You're like, this promising. You're right. <laughs> and now you come back and you're a captain. Yeah. Which is insane, by the way, I still can't even get over that. And I mean, by my first game obviously it was our first game you know as a mm -hmm. entire team but for me yeah. individually it was still unreal to me to even have that captain band on because I haven't been like I haven't had that title since high school mm -hmm. you know going to college has always been kind of the upperclassman and this last year it just kind of wasn't like I was kind of just a leader by example you know I wasn't mm -hmm. I was trying to get to go through yeah. the motion you know, nothing get, like fully like, it wasn't yeah. like oh you are the captain like you just acted as it yeah and so um I remember he was Jim was doing my CV and we mm -hmm. haven't spoken on the phone in a while and actually like he was just kind of like okay send me this information for your CV so we can get it out to teams mm -hmm. or whatever and he sends me the CV and on it you know with all of my whatever mm -hmm. for Tormenta's like Tormenta's 2023 captain I was like, what? So I sent it back to him. I said, is this a typo? <laughs> he's like, do you it's want it to be? Yeah, he's like, do you want it to be? And I'm like, oh my gosh, of course not. But he was like, yeah, I mean, um, I think you're fit for the role. And just kind of like, this is, that's that's what I see for my team. You know, I, I see you being that leader, like in that leadership role. And obviously he wants everyone to be a leader. But when it comes to certain things, I feel like he just trusted me because of our relationship and because I I know I've been here, you know, last year. So knowing there wasn't going to be a lot of returners, I felt like that also made his decision a little easier to say, OK, I trust in this player and I feel like she's capable of doing. You yeah, know, you already build that relationship and like he knows your character and like your judgment. Right. So like he knows what do you can. And also, I'm guessing like being back, like you won't be shocked by like what like they're asking for and like what the demands of the league are and everything it's like you already culture. yeah i already know the culture yeah. of tormenta as a whole so i was shocked but then i was like yeah i can do it sure i guess <laughs> I like twist my arm i guess i will do it now yeah uh, it's nothing big no, it's like, just captain chances right <laughs> like hold on guys but so like now coming back and you guys play your first game how is it like different than what last year like for you like right. what is it like like first game first time back like everything so actually it's completely different than last year which is a good thing you know mm -hmm. um I felt like I needed another shift in my game and these players have brought that you know these players are competitive and I felt like last year yes we were but also since it was kind of the first year people were still kind of filling it out some mm -hmm. people weren't sure if they're gonna play we we're just seeing how the league would go like flow as yeah. a whole I felt like a lot of things were uncertain last year, but we kind of made it work with what we had mm -hmm. this year. It's kind of like Jim has made he Jim has made this team his and everything about it from the top to the bottom. I felt like, you know, it's really Jim's team. And I felt like that has made a complete difference because, you know, all of these players are specifically picked from film, like hours of film by coach Jim and Jason, Jason. So I felt like specifically picked players and people. And I felt like that made it like, we have a deep roster, like one of the deepest rosters I've ever been on since I've played. Um, so it makes it the environment extremely competitive. And I feel like since people are from everywhere, like last year, we had a lot mm -hmm. of players come from the same place. Yeah. But here I knew one player coming in. Other than oh, the return, wow. like two the two other returners, which obviously still like I didn't spend a lot of time with them. So it's like everything was new. 
the players yeah. the entire system so coming in it wasn't like last year where we're kind of like okay I couldn't know this person I know I played with Bella and her sisters the Gutierrez is like bef- prior to coming to Tormenta so I kind of knew what to expect but here I'm like these girls are new like I don't I've never seen any of them play so yeah. it was kind of like that was the biggest thing for me as well and just having to like immediately come into a new team after mm-hmm. you know I had to graduate so I came in pretty late Mm-hmm. and I remember texting my teammates I'm like how is it how's it going and everyone's like everyone's so great like you know just not knowing people and having to really just go through that mm-hmm. process again it, it was definitely so different for me and then like the playing style the level is also different you know now since we are reigning champs you know more talent is flowing more in. eyes more yeah everything. And players that are top and where they come from I mean they're here and I felt like that was also big for me you know and I guess that's just added, yeah you said huh that's exciting like like now that you're coming back and it's like oh like everyone's wanting to come here like yeah. we are we are like next level now I agree yeah and that's what Darren and Nietzsche we had we had these like intro meetings in the beginning mm-hmm. with the owners and they just go through and talk about just culture what they expect in this environment professionalism all that and one of the things they spoke about is just when you wear the badge, it means more than what it may feel like to you, like from the outside. Like being in Statesboro is so small, but people take Tormenta very seriously and they treat Tormenta players like professionals. And so you have to kind of walk that way, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a huge deal when you wear that badge. And that's why I was looking at, I was literally, when she was speaking in the meeting today, I was looking at Tormenta in the badge and I'm like, wow, as corny as that sounds, I was literally like, oh my gosh, this is insane you know yeah like it clicked you're like oh oh this is for real like, yeah this is what it is you know and they're so su- I I can't express that enough like they're super professional so I feel like that is that just makes a huge difference mm-hmm. you know between Tormenta and another club it's just the way they carry themselves and the owners are insane the way they just speak you know they're so intelligent it's like they know what they're doing they know what they expect from their players so I feel like that's why to me it's like I like how new it is because everyone's specifically picked and they they take so much time and effort into picking us so I felt like it, it just feels unreal I don't know it, all of that feels unreal but it's, it's exciting and it's new. yeah you know? no but it's wild just because you know like last year when we talked you're like no it feels like very big deal very everything and like now right. you're like no this year it's elevated so like yes. it does show you like what a year in the league does like what right. like winning the champion like what everything kind of like like one step after the other really moves up, which is nice to hear because you know like you do want the team and the league to continue to step it up and not just stay as it is. So like the league can continue to grow and like you say like now players like top level players from everywhere are trying to come like Jim picked them like he could pick the players because everyone probably wanted to play for you guys. All right so that's what I'm like, wow. this is crazy yeah in the league you know I feel like the league is huge a huge deal yeah. and so many people are like you know talking about it and spreading the word about it and I just feel like it's important for us to continue to grow even if I don't play in the league next year you know hopefully and not in a, not in a bad way <laughs> but hopefully you know <laughs> yeah. I can play somewhere else but you know I feel like the way this league has grown is tremendous like it's just insane so you know yeah, that's, that's big now I love that like seeing it from outside it's like oh the like the movement the way that it's going like you see people attendance like to games and everything it's wild you yeah, guys have your home game your home opener this Friday right Friday, yeah oh how are you preparing for that how's the team prepare like oh my gosh everyone is so serious here and I mean serious when we're on the pitch you know yeah serious when we're playing and everyone is just they think you know, very deeply about the way they carry themselves. You know, you're going to have players that come in early and, you know, you see them working off like, you know, like the little boards, like passing off the boards, just trying to get touches. Mm -hmm. You're going to see players stay back, smashing PKs, you know, doing short sprints. You're going to see players go into treatment and recovery, you know, continuously. And I feel like that's how we're preparing. We're preparing by actually as an individual, Mm -hmm. making sure that we take care of ourselves so we can, you know, win our individual battles in the game. But also when it comes to just us as a unit, I mean, when we eat lunch together, things like that, when we go to like we have like this Georgia Southern thing they do, they do a lot of stuff with um, 
like just helping us figure out our bodies and stuff. And when we yeah. do that, we carpool, we go to Starbucks together, you know, we do the little things together. So that reflects, you know, how we interact on the pitch as well. But also when you do the individual stuff, you know, the rest just comes with it. You know, as long as everyone is preparing the correct way, you know, when nobody's watching, I yeah, feel like that's the biggest, that has the biggest impact on this team. Like everyone is so determined to, oh, you know, get another, you know, get another star. So mm-hmm. that's how, I think. how do you prepare individually? Like, like before a game, like what do you do? I don't know. I think one of my things is like one of my biggest things, mental game, like the mental game, preparing for that battle, because as a center back, it's not so much, I'm not doing crazy heel flicks, you know, I'm not beating everyone to school. Maybe, and maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe you do this year. Who knows? Maybe. No, <laughs> yeah. Jim would kill me, but no. Um, like you are out. This is not it. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's like, don't ever do that again. But <laughs> no, it's just like, for me, it's a big mental game and be, being able to get my team together and organize. Um, Jim is very big on the word polish. And basically what he means by it is just that being polished. And he's been a center back. He's been a captain. So he's a very good leader when it comes to that. And for me, it's just like getting my team organized, making sure everyone is polished. So he was talking about it today. Like if I don't touch the ball as a center back, good. Doing a great job. Yeah, yeah, everyone's doing a job and for me that's my role it's like making sure I don't touch the ball making sure everyone else in front of me is organized so me or the keeper doesn't you know don't touch the ball so I feel like for me it's just mental game you know I don't have to worry I I know that I'm I'm capable of doing the technical stuff you know I can pass all five yards I can smash the ball however far you know so I feel like for me it's just mentally preparing myself to battle with my girls and uh, making sure that they're they're ready you know and I guess reading I love reading before games me and my roommate we're always like are you finished with your book she's more like fictional yeah she's more fictional I'm like reading mental mindset and I'm like yeah yeah and she's like like reading about fairy completely different vibes (laughs) completely different vibes yeah but she but it like prepares her mentally just as much as the books do for me you know yeah so um also big on reading and I like to prayer obviously you know as a Christian I'm always like always making sure that I make I make sure that I'm thankful for what I have and being in this position Mm -hmm. and that I use his strength to push me forward throughout the day throughout the games um so that's big for me and just talking to my family when I before a game if I'm talking to my mom she always reminds me where I started because she was the one that you know she was the one that drove me yeah. So she's always like, remember where you started, you know, that was her biggest yeah. thing. She was like, it's your journey, but you know, think about that, you know, play like how you played then you just had fun and stuff. So yeah. You gotta enjoy I, it. Almost enjoy right. it the same way. Yeah. And exactly. I guess like, and it's true. I never thought about like, where you saying like, yes, you can pass away. Like as a center back, like you, you hope you don't have to, because then that means like the team is moving forward. Like it's, it's on the attack. Right. It's not on the counter. Like maybe like right. you, they're just passing by gray, but like not even like you don't want to have to come up with a massive save. Exactly. I'm saying I don't want to have to save the ball with my face off the line. Slide have <laughs> That's to rough. on my Yeah. I'm like, you know what? How about you guys just keep it up there? I look pretty in the back. I pass the ball once or twice. And we yeah, like on. you will hear me from here. But exactly. you don't You'll need me, me to interact. Like that's it. Right, exactly. You're ready to pull another like playing every minute like you played last season pretty much. Yeah, kind of. I'm 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 kind of there, kind of not because guess we have tons of competition now, and it's like for me, I'm not preparing to go back to college, but my other three center backs, they, they are. are, and I'm like for me, as a captain, my biggest thing is also making sure my teammates are okay, and so I know that he'll rotate us a lot because we all have expectations of playing, mm-hmm. you know, in the future. And for us, the biggest thing, since our roster is so deep, we should be able to rotate. We should be able to rest. You know, we should be able to get people, you know, provide minutes for every center back Mm -hmm. that we have and allow everyone to showcase what, you know, what they're working with. So I'm, I'm proud of that because it can save us from injuries, you know, overworking, you know, burnout. And I feel like that's really important, especially now in the women's game, just making sure that you keep a good mindset like you know mm-hmm. and you don't kind of go overboard because you know that mental stuff is crazy and I feel like yeah. especially with a short 
summer, you know, playing, Mm -hmm. it's important that we do take mental break days. You know, we do have a game. We do have a day where it's like, okay, I don't even want to be rostered today. I just want to watch my team and shout and, you know, and enjoy. Yeah, you're like, can I be a fan? Can I just yeah, be a fan I, today? Like, like, this is so fun. Can I be with the super fans? Can I be with the super fans blowing up the smoke? I'm like, yes. So, you know. I'm, but that's nice, though, because I feel like a lot of people wouldn't. Like, a lot of players don't think that way, though. Like, everyone wants to have as much time and a feeling and everything. But, like, it's right. it's not that, like, you can't. It's just that it's also important to, you know, say, hey, I maybe could take a couple of minutes off and stretch and, like, rest because – we will turn around like do it again exactly and that's someone else can showcase what they can do right and I feel the same way it's like yeah I want to play every freaking minute I want to play all the time but it's also like I know what it felt like coming from this summer going straight into college play and it's just not a realistic thing to do knowing that Mm -hmm. it's going to be overwhelming going to college is so so different you know Mm -hmm. you have programs that that are insane completely different than what we do here so I feel like it's important that you take care of that stuff. And that's why Jim specifically has a deep roster. So he's not like, it's, it's for us. It's not for him. It's not so he can rotate four center backs. If he could just have yeah. two, he probably would just have two good center backs, yeah. but he knows that it's important that he doesn't put us at risk of, mm-hmm. you know, having any other issues. So I feel like that's important. But of course, all of us want to play. If you ask any of us, we're going to be like, uh, yeah, we want to play 90 minutes every single game. Yeah, like put me in. Thank you. Yeah. Like, take me out. But knowing that we want to play in the future, it's just not as realistic to run ourselves to the ground and then go back and possibly run ourselves to the ground even more. So. Yeah, especially with so many like ACL injuries that have happened the last year. Like I can't imagine like I see it and I'm not playing and I'm and like it's stretch. You know, you're like, how is this happening so I'm sure like for you as players it's even more like a way we really do need to like approach this differently and maybe like think what to do to avoid being the player ending up with an ACL injury like a major injury that like can take you off for not 30 minutes for months for a year no I agree we did this I don't even know what it's called but it's just a lot of testing And the doctor that we were speaking to, she was just saying, you know, she's from Georgia Southern. She was like, one of the biggest things in women's sports are knee injuries, you know? And she's like, there are not a lot of testing being done. You know, there's not enough testing being done Mm -hmm. for women when it comes to, you know, these things happening. And she was like, the biggest thing is um, trying to get you guys doing these kind of testing. So you have an understanding of where you can start, you know, what what are the things that you can do to prevent these knee injuries? And I feel like the more that grows, the more it'll probably become more realistic that you can play 90 minutes every game. You know, if you're doing the right testing, if you're doing the proper treatment and recovery, I feel like then it becomes more realistic. But since we don't have, you know, that type of equipment, you know, ready for us when we come here, it's difficult. So I feel like the more those things get exposed in women's soccer, you know, I feel like the more we can do, you know, the more leagues we can have, whereas like players are actually able to do, you know, both college and summer and have like a reasonable time of you know recovery and everything yeah exactly so I feel like the more resources that are available to women's soccer you know that's when I can be like okay you know we'll be good to go but since they're not it's just difficult you know I don't want yeah, to everything, everything very up in the air like right what, oh like what can I do oh no one really can tell you what it is that even caused it in the first place or like how to maybe avoid it like there's no real answer to it if not there would be like over 50 injuries in the past year for like major players missing like world cups and stuff like that and I was thinking about it it's like that is also what we see like at the professional level no one's really telling you like for like lower divisions or like college like how many of the players are also going through that so it's good to know that like you guys had some sort of like talk or like I didn't know that you guys were doing that kind of like like medical preparation everything for to avoid these things which it's so important I'm glad like Tormenta is doing it because I'm sure not everyone's gonna be doing it but it should be the norm not the exception agreed exactly and that's what and the thing is Georgia Southern was like we do it for you guys you know because of of course they do it on the men's professional side Mm -hmm. and this is kind of the first time they're doing it with us but I'm like 
the first time this is this is the first time I've ever done testing like this, not even in college. You know, I played at the D2 level, you know, private school, which, you know, they don't have the most money, but you still expect some sort of professionalism when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. But no. So it's like this is that was the first time I actually done testing like that. You know, we did foot posture, learned new things about the type of shoes and stuff that I need to wear that can prevent, you know, other things. And it's just insane to me that at the age of I'm about to be 22 at the end of this month. And I'm like, I've been playing soccer for years and I didn't know these simple things about my own body. And I feel like that sucks because I felt like, okay, maybe I could have, you know, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Cause I'm like, maybe I could have prevented this injury. You know, maybe yeah. I could have fixed this a while ago, you know? Um, but now it's like, okay, now that I know, at least I can start fixing it now and figuring things out. But that's why I'm like, I can't even, I, the amount of uh thank I know respect or I don't even know the amount of yeah it's like it's better late than never to know yeah. what like this approaches or like tactics you can do but at the same time right. it's like like you're saying it's like 20 plus years of playing and like now there it's that you're learning that like maybe stepping this way or wearing this footwear or right. just like stretching this muscle or anything like that or like strengthening will like avoid an injury that should it like was that easy right it's kind of wild like I wouldn't be able to tell you like I don't there is nothing out there that you can really read that can tell you oh this is how you avoid like knee injuries that are so prevalent in women right which is absurd yeah it's absurd but you know (laughs) hopefully you know organizations like you know what you're in and other women in sports kind of organizations Mm -hmm. can help spread that word and continue to grow women's sports in general as a whole yeah. and hopefully those things can just start appearing for us you know research is starting to be done and things are starting to just come about so we can figure these things out because like you said the art like the arsenal women's team that is insane they the got amount- another injury today you're lying no during today's game no. wow Leah had to get stretched oh she came out on stretch i think like the 54th minute also and, and, and that tackle they tackle her back and that's insane. out on the stretcher. I was wow. like, are you kidding me? Yeah. And it's just, no. I don't know. The woman game just needs to, I'm I'm just happy that it's growing. You know, I'm just happy yeah. that it's growing, but it's still like, it still kind of sucks hearing about these things, you know? And it's just kind of like, we're just going to have to go day by day and figure it out. Yeah. We need like more organizations like Tormenta and stuff like that that are doing this educational changes and really putting the money into yeah, it for right, to like see the change. Like you do need to put the money, the time, the effort, like want to make the change for it to like evolve. Right. So it's nice, I guess, that you found yourself in a situation that like you are in a place Blessing. that is doing that. And now right. you also know like what the standard should be, you know, like not, oh, well, let's see what like I'm going to come across like that. That just sucks. Right. I agree. Yeah. It's a blessing, quite honestly. And I know there may be other organizations that have pro men's teams that mm-hmm. probably offer things, but I'm like, it shouldn't just be because there is a pro men's team. Yeah. It should just be because they're like, okay, we want to see women athletes not have these issues anymore. So absolutely. So I guess kind of like, what can people expect from the game on Friday for those going? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Let me think. As, I guess excitement, you know, coming from our team, we're excited to finally play in the stadium. We've been waiting for this moment all year, you know, so I feel yes. like that's the biggest thing, just playing under the home lights and everything that Darren and Nietzsche have done for that, you know, entire stadium and process. Yeah. It's insane. And they, they take us through that. So they work so hard. So I feel like when you play out there, you're going to see excitement. You're going to see us working until that final whistle. So I, mm-hmm. I guess just us playing with heart, playing with each other, playing for the fans, you know, and making sure that we respect them and do everything and respect our opponent. You know, they're a new team in the conference. I think, yeah, Legion, they're a new team. This is going to be their first game. So I know they're going to be nervous stepping on our home ground, but, you know, we're going to welcome them and respect them. And I think we're just going to make sure that we give uh, the home fans, you know, something to cheer for us. Oh, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to be watching. I'm gonna oh. be like, I will need to figure out a way to somewhat make it there at some point in my life. But right. <laughs> I'll be watching. It. And what is one thing, like, for the people going, what is one thing that they should do in, like, the area that you guys are on? Like, what is one thing that you have to visit? 
So you're oh, saying, place. what is one thing they should do? Yeah, like if I go come? there, if I go there, like where's one spot that I need to hit or something, like something local. Mm. Oh, I like Nats. Nats is a small, chill little bar thing. And they, I think they have like 50 cent wings tonight. Oh my gosh. I'm just oh. <laughs> Okay, that's no. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big states bro. Like, I don't come here often, but when I do, I do like Nats. They have good wings there. Um, let me see. Because we do all the, I think we do all the catering, Tormenta. <laughs> um, let me think. I don't know. What is a yeah. nice little spot? Oh, the Publix next next door. I love Publix. Okay, but I it's new Publix. two stories. Two stories. Yes, that is the new Publix, and you can yeah you can sit on the thing and eat your sub and a nice beautiful uh, yeah it's a Publix. Stuff. Yeah, a Publix. So you know what? That's I'm I'm obsessed with Publix as well, by the way. And so when I it's came here one. and I saw that Publix and it's like two stories and it has everything that you need. Yeah, you better grab your snacks from the Publix get your pubs up and come right straight you can walk to the field by the way you can walk oh that is a great location yeah so it's insane it's insane so yeah no that's my biggest thing go get your pubs up get your coat like jim would say and come to the field and be prepared with your tormented gear on because that's how that's the only way you're going to get in the game for free i'm just kidding Mm -hmm. (laughs) i I would be like where where is it i'm like where is it y'all where is the tormented jersey I forget what. Right. See, okay. There's things well, we did. We, I think they did post something about our little scarves that you can go get on the website. I'm pretty sure I'm on the last slide, so just keep clicking. And you'll <laughs> like, I'm just there. gonna continue on till I find you. Okay. Yeah, they better exactly. have like captain on it now. Oh, <laughs> uh, I wish. I told him. I said, "Is this a typo?" No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 